Ken Weller here with New Tech Inventors. Uh, today I'm doing a little bit of editing. I've gone back and picked up some video clips that I've made um, and some that just haven't been able to find their way into a video yet. So I'm going to put this stuff together and provide it to you and uh, give you a little more information on where we are at New Tech Inventors. Thanks for watching. Another thing I wanted to mention was that I've been working quite a bit on my website. I shot a little bit of video. I'll show you here. Okay, we've been uh, taking some video and we'll be going through these video clips and taking shots uh, or picture shots from those video clips of these parts here. And you can see I've got my lighting all set up in here. And what we're doing, uh, like right now, this is the uh, table clamp uh, helping hand. And this is the table uh, portable helping hand. And you can see our clamps connected to it. And we've also, uh, we've also been taking pictures of the other components like the um, attachment here for the vise and so forth. So all of that is for the website. Um, and this is just some of the work I have to do creating a backdrop. And uh, this thing was put together quickly. So maybe when I get time, I can do a more professional job, um, get this backdrop ironed and get the wrinkles out of it, um, get a better setup for my parts here and so forth. And uh, But th this is just what I'm having to do to get through these different steps. Sometimes I have to rush along a little bit and um, throw things together just to get a particular task finished and the website's very important and um, and getting these items on there and descriptions of them pictures of them pricing and so forth uh, so that we can start selling product in the near future is an important part of the job. That's why today I've been dedicated uh, nothing but this. Uh, no print farm work, uh, nothing else. Just focused on getting these pictures done. And I thought I'd do the short part of this video just to show you um, that it's not uh, all fun and games, and it's not a simple process, but we're getting there. Uh, basically, what I've been doing as far as trying to get pictures of the different parts that are going to be sold on the website. Um, uh, basically, these parts are helping hand parts that we're using to uh, test the website out. And... Um, in addition to that, we did finalize on a logo, and if you happen to check the YouTube logo now, I've changed that over to the um, new logo that we came up with, NTI, New Tech Inventors. And uh, so things are coming along in that area. We're doing a, quite a bit um, with the website, as well as uh, keeping things going with the print farm. A few videos back, I showed you some Comfast uh, uh, repeaters, bridge. It could be used different ways for outdoor uh, Wi-Fi expansion. And uh, one of my sons came over this past weekend, Saturday, and helped me. Spent almost all day here helping me install those and get Wi-Fi um, down there to the building. And the units are have about uh, 300 meter range. And 
we had them cut down to low power because we only had about 250 feet at the most, 200, 250 between the units. But um, we cut them down to the lower, one of the lowest power settings and now you can go outside <laughs> and we've got Wi-Fi all over the, the five acres that we have here uh, because by the time they cone out and everything, um, 600 feet away, you're getting uh, like four bars or something out in the front uh, toward the, the street. So um, that's going to work real well. We've got good Wi-Fi inside the building down there now. And that was one thing I wanted to get done. And he helped me pull the main service cable for the uh, sub panel. It was a real heavy wire that had to be fed through some rafters. And uh, so I appreciated him helping me get that in. So those were two major things that we accomplished um, this weekend. And I'll be doing some videos showing you how things are coming along on that. Okay, just got finished running the rest of the wiring for um, some more circuits here. See, we've got one there in the ceiling, the wall there, there, there. Back up in the ceiling again. Ran it through our ductwork back here. So, get these circuits. These will be for some future printers. But we wanted to go ahead and get them in now. Well, our panel's all finished. See, we've got all of our breakers installed here. We'll be labeling those breakers up here, telling us what each one goes to. Somebody made a big mess at my print farm. Look at all of this mess down here on the floor. It's on my shelves. All over the place. A big mess. And I just wonder who's going to have to clean it up. Uh, I'll let you all guess that one. Are you going to clean up this mess? And we're going to be also including in the video on the print farm uh, a little bit more about the electrical. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about uh, the panel, how I'm wiring the circuits, uh, how much, what size wire and so forth. There seem to be some people out there interested in that and I um, want to make sure that they have a pretty good understanding if, if they uh, decide to do that themselves. Anyone planning on doing a print farm, if if you're doing over 12 or 12, 14, 15 printers, you, you are probably going to have to do some type of electrical uh, work or have someone do something to give you a little more power uh, for those printers. Uh, with us down there, uh, I know we're going to have 60 or more printers and uh, so we definitely have to have a total independent wiring system for the electrical for all of those printers. It's a good idea just to make sure that you're maintaining a good balance um, of power down there. It also gives me a way to monitor that power because I can monitor the current uh, going through that panel and I'll show you how to do that. And... Um, be able to calculate just about how much my power is um, costing me down there to run these printers. So that that's another thing we're going to be including when we do that vid video. The other one that I promised, I kind of promised, I said I was going to try to have a video out on the resin printers. 
Okay, here we are. This is going to be the home of our resin printer project. You can see this used to be a powder coat booth and powder coat everything from exhaust systems to Harley Davidson covers, outdoor valve covers for cars, wheels, uh, fenders, you name it. These were some sample things. One thing good about powder coating, if you look at this part here, um, it's a little hard to show you, but you can bend this tubing and no matter how hard you bend it, the paint doesn't crack or peel. Um, because the paint itself is fused into the metal during the powder coating process. It's uh, similar to what's being done with the metal 3D printers. Uh, this particular paint comes in a powder and it's sprayed uh, it's actually hooked up to electrodes up here and um, you spray the powder and you can see a lot of the overspray of the powder on the walls here and you spray the powder on the metal object with an electrode attached to it so the electrostatic uh, field attracts the powder and the powder collects all around the object and then it's taken from here and put in a powder coat oven. I'll show you later. Um, but <clears throat> it's put in that oven and heated for a period of time at a temperature, <clears throat> depending on the part. And that causes the, the particles to solidify and be absorbed into the metal and become part of the metal. <clears throat> so you've heard about powder coat painting well that's what happens here and it's similar to the process with the metal 3d printers they're using a metallic powder to print with and then later heating that to a temperature where the metal will fuse with itself and make a solid object so <coughs> pardon me so here's the start you've got to clean this stuff out and uh, clean up this area Put a table in here for my um, printers and we'll go from there. And I just haven't had a chance to get that all together yet. I still have that area that I'm working on, but I kind of broke away from it to um, take care of some other things that I'm doing. So um, as soon as I get back to it, I'm going to set up the resin printers and we'll see how that works. It's probably going to be about the same time or close to the same time that I'm going to try to test run about 20 some odd A nets down there. Just uh, once I get them all uh, set up, I've, I've assembled them, but I haven't gone through and checked the linemen on them and done some of the detail things that we need to do before we start test printing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to test print the parts that I intend to print with that printer because I don't care uh, if it does a terrible job printing uh, a part like this. If I'm not going to print this on it, I, I'm not going to worry about it. But the parts that I am going to print on it, I want to fine-tune it so that it does an excellent job with those particular parts. So that's uh, that's what we'll have to do with those printers down there and that'll be part of the test print process that I'll be talking about. We won't actually be running production jobs but we'll have all the printers running and all of them printing um, uh, those test parts that they'll eventually be running so we can take them check them, check dimensions and everything, make sure that um, they're useful 
and good quality parts. I've got to make up a lot more of the filament adapters um, that uh, extend the, uh, allow me to run the wider spools of filament. I'll need to make several of those for all of the uh, ANET printers that I'll be running and get those on. I've got to actually modify that ANET filament holder, which means I have to take it out and do some metal fabricating with the uh, mount itself so it can be attached a different way uh, where it'll work for me in that limited vertical space that I have. I'll also be uh, running wires and uh, uh, preparing for some of the camera installation for the cameras that will be monitoring the printers. And I also have some additional LED lighting that need, has to be installed. Um, I have some of that in and some more coming, so we'll be installing the LED lighting uh, for the printers, doing that along with some of the other things in the next video. Well, I think that's enough for now, so until the next time, thank you for watching. So, a uh, couple of things there. I just wanted to get this video going. Take a break here and let me just think a minute. Okay. So, another pause here while I think of something else. So, another little break here. Let's see, is there anything else we can throw in? Because I'm trying to get enough content here to get a video out. Because I feel bad about not getting one out this weekend. I've been doing pretty good about getting the videos out. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple other things I'm doing, too. I'll be down there. Uh, so, let's see. Anything else? It's a good thing we can edit this, these pauses and this think time out. As long as I stay in about the same position so I can <laughs> jump back in. <clears throat> Well, that's about all I can think of for now. Okay.